today I am going to show you guys my entire eyeshadow palette collection, the whole collection. Now I'm not going to go super, super in depth on every single palette and I'm not going to do like full on swatches of every single palette because otherwise we would probably be here for like two or three hours, <laughs> but I am going to show you every single palette in the collection, give a little synopsis, maybe swatch a few of my favorite shades, that kind of jazz. So it'll still be fun, but yeah, just if you're expecting me to do like full swatches and everything of every palette, I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to show you every single eyeshadow palette I own. Okay? So that's what we're doing. Hopefully that sounds exciting to you. And if it does, let's go ahead and do the YouTube things. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's go to desk format and do it. I just actually quickly counted them and I have 79 eyeshadow palettes, which I don't actually, like that's too, that's way too much, but at least I'm still under 100 and I actually already have a few in mind that I want to declutter, but I don't think I'll do that in this video. I think I'll do like a separate maybe declutter video or something like that, but yeah. All right, let's just get into it, shall we? Let's start with this one. This is Dior. This is the only Dior quint I own and Dior eyeshadow I own. This is the um, Birds of a Feather Early Bird palette. And I bought this because I fell head over heels in love with it, but particularly this mustard shade. And I really love it. It is like a jelly form formula kind of almost like it feels almost like the um the face powder you know the backstage face powder that's almost what this formula feels like you do have to dig quite hard it's not like you kind of really need to dig your finger in to pick up the pigment and then pack it on your eye and then blend it out and that's why I, a lot of people didn't like this palette because of that I really, really do like this palette. I think it's really pretty and I really like the metallics in here. They're super lovely and sparkly and just like buttery feeling. So I personally quite liked this palette, but I know a lot of people thought it wasn't worth it. Also, none of this is ranked. I'm not doing that. We're not doing that today, that's for sure. M Cosmetics, this is the Divine Skies eyeshadow palette. Really, really like this. I think this is beautiful. The metallics in here, there's like a duochrome as well in here. Like, look at that. Very pretty, gorgeous, gorgeous um, eyeshadow palette, gorgeous formula. Um, the mattes are stunning. Such a really good everyday kind of palette. I think I actually have 82 palettes because I forgot that I had three palettes in a different drawer. Surprisingly, the only Charlotte Tilbury palette I have is this one, Smoky Eyes Are Forever. And I know a lot of people didn't pick this up because it wasn't anything super innovative, but man, is this a good quality palette. If all her eyeshadows are this formula, then I need to almost like pick them all up because my god the formula of this palette the metallics are incredible i'm not going to be able to swatch them all and like do them justice but the metallics are incredible in this palette so pigmented so easy to use the mattes here just blend themselves like this is such a good like everyday user-friendly palette this palette i wanted as soon as i saw it and it took me a little minute to get it and then i finally got it on sale this is the nabla side by side palette the color story just honestly speaks to me it's i'm it, this gray which i haven't used that i I just love it. I just love every tone in this palette and this is a good palette. I really like it. I don't think I would pay like full price for it just because, oh, look at that purple, like, oh, that's me, that's a me color. Um, I don't think I'd pay necessarily, although it is kind of worth the money. Like look at the shades, like I need to use this again, but I just, the shades in here are just absolutely stunning and the quality of the mattes is beautiful just overall this is such a good palette i know i'm saying everything at the moment is a good palette i'll let you know the crap ones when we get to them i don't really keep any crap makeup though so most of them are probably pretty good Too faced gingerbread palettes i keep this around for the fact that it is my only Too faced palette and the nostalgia of it and i, I do really like the the vibe of this. I don't love Too Faced as a brand. I don't really like the CEO of it, like that Jared guy. He, I don't know, just weird vibes. Anyway, um, but I have never, and these are old now, so this is definitely off. I just need to let this go because it's definitely off. You can just feel it in the formula and touching it. It never used to feel that crumbly and like dry, but it just didn't perform the way that I expected it to, the way that people raved about Too Faced and their like uh, their formula and like especially in this tin kind of thing like people just really were like oh my god their formula is so good da 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 and I'm just like I never felt it even when this was like a brand new palette I just never felt that so yeah this always just basically sat in my collection I think I used this maybe like three or four times I just couldn't get into it but it's just so cute and like I don't know it was just something about it I just couldn't declutter it and I got it in America as well one time so there's something about that and 
But yeah, I just, I really need to let this go. It's proper off now. The palette that I'm so sad is no longer available. And like, look how gross this is. This is the KKW Cross Mario palette. I got this because it's Mario. Like this was before he had his makeup brand out. And I just love Mario so much. Like look how much I've used this shade. I used to use this, like even this one, I use this palette a lot. There was like a year in between me starting Instagram and I kind of did like three YouTube videos. And then I had like a year off because work just got so busy. I couldn't do both. And I used this palette every single day that year, like pretty much. Like I pretty much just used this palette and I really liked it. I still like it's it's definitely old now. Like you can just even feel it in touching the formula, really. It's just not the quality is not there anymore. But at the time, the quality really was there and I freaking loved it. If I could buy a brand new one of these, I honestly would. It was so good. Dominique Cosmetics Lemonade Palette. I just love the color story of this so much. Like this mint is so good. And then this blueberry color, even these actually feel pretty good for how old they are. And like this yellow divine, like, and the mattes in here. This palette is so awesome. I can't believe she doesn't make this palette anymore. I think she did have trouble with the formulation of this particular palette. I really like it. My only Tarte palette that I have left in my collection, who remembers this? The Tartist Pro. Oh my Lord, did anyone else just go out and buy this because all of the influencers went on a Tarte, like tripping with Tarte to Bora Bora when this got released because same Z's. I can still vividly remember the trip in the YouTube videos that like Laura Lee and Manny did. This isn't a bad palette. Like the formula was actually really good. I used this row a hell of a lot more than, and this color more than most of it. I just didn't like the color of um, the metallics that they like had in this palette, they just went kind of my vibe. They were a bit too like dark and smoky, especially back when I got this. But overall, the actual quality of this is pretty darn good. This is another one that I've kind of had for, well, whenever it came out, which was years ago, right? Like four years ago, I want to say, maybe three, but I, I feel like four. So I probably also need to let this go just because it's probably a bit old, but who remembers? Yell out down in the comments down below if you remember. Lime Crime Greatest Hits Bangers. I loved, okay, who guesses which shade in this palette was the reason why I bought this? Who can tell? Who can tell? Yes, it's the mustard shade. <laughs> Anything with a mustard I'm into. But also these are so pretty. Like I actually really don't mind this palette. It's just, I don't know. When I picked it up, like look how pretty they are. They're gorgeous. When I picked it up, um, the color story, mainly the mustard, really drew me in. And I was like, oh my god, I'm going to create so many looks with this palette. But then when I go to use it, it's just kind of not cohesive at the same time. And I find it hard to kind of like, even me, like I feel like I'm pretty good at matching colors together for looks. And I just was kind of like, I'm not as inspired with this. But I do want to bring this out a bit more because I really do quite like this palette. Jouer Essential Matte and Shimmer Palette. I picked this up because, to be honest... One, this was on sale for $12. So I was like, yeah, YOLO, why not $12? Um, two, I really, really want the Makeup by Mario, like, all matte eyeshadow palette. And for some reason, I just keep talking myself out of buying that palette. Like, I really don't need it, and I keep talking myself out of it, even though I have wanted it for well over a year. Then I saw this, and um, a couple of you guys recommended it to me. Um, as like a substitute and so I picked it up when I saw it for like $12 But I think that the reason why this was $12 is because it's like off and like those shadows are really pretty But the perf like the performance of this whole palette is pretty poor if I'm honest and I don't know if it's because it's off and that's why it was on sale for $12 or if it's the formula from the brand. This is the Monsoon palette from What's Up Beauty and I haven't actually shown this on my channel yet or really anywhere. I did actually film a video and then just forgot to edit it and then too much time had passed but the brand actually sent me this in PR which was really lovely of them and it's a beautiful palette. Like look at the kind of colors there. I don't know if you can see. I just I actually don't know why I haven't really picked this up. Let me know if you would like to see a video on this because... Look at the green. Ooh, the metallics in here are really, really pretty. And like even this bright purple and the formula is lovely. I've actually used this a bit like in my real life off camera in my real life. And I use this quite a bit because the neutrals and everything in here are really pretty and the, eye, the metallics are really quite sparkly, but I don't know why I haven't used it on camera. So let me know if you want to see a video with this. 
and I shall do it. Glaminatrix U Beauty palette, another palette that was sent to me in PR, which I'm so grateful for. I was actually going to buy this palette anyway, and then the brand reached out. And actually one of the reasons why I most love being on Glaminatrix, um, well, this was the only item I have received from them on PR. And what I loved about it was I didn't have to wait for the pre-order. And that was awesome because that's one thing that does deter me from this brand a little bit, if I'm honest, is just the pre-order because I'm super impatient. But look at these shades. I mean, these two in particular, like this one and this one, is freaking mind-blowing. And again, this is another palette I actually use quite a lot in my everyday life and just forget to show on camera. So let me know if you want to see, let me know if you want to see a video with any of these palettes, you guys, but particularly this one and the What's Up Beauty one because they're spectacular. And I will be picking up the new neutral palette that Glaminatrix is just about to release because that is screaming my name and something that I'll get a lot of use out of. Who remembers this? Kaleidos Cross Angie Nyquist. I love this palette. It's gorgeous. This whole color story, like this top row with the greens, it's magical, the metallics in here, Look, the formula is so pretty. It's such a beautiful palette. I do not use this as much as I should just because it's so colorful, but I really need to bring it out and do some colorful looks, honestly, because this is quality. And I hope that if you even thought about getting this, you got your hands on it because the quality of it is just that impeccable, truly. And I wish that like, I know that they can't because it's a collab, but I do wish that this could be made permanent because I think it's just spectacular. This needs no introduction. This is our beautiful Mel Thompson Cross Sydney Grace Tiny Marbles. One of my all time favorite palettes. It's truly just, it's truly high quality. It's beautiful. The color story, this one, Fire Butts. One of my all time favorite shades. Like, look at that. These metallics are like proper cream shadows almost. Like they're just gorgeous. I love the whole color story of this with the pops of color, the neutrals and how the neutrals are more cool tone, like straight down the line leaning. I love the metallics. I just love this palette so, so much. And again, this is just something that will always live in my collection because of our beautiful Mel. Next up, we have this new love of mine, which is the NARS Climax palette, another limited edition palette. I don't know why NARS makes everything limited edition. It's truly heartbreaking, especially this palette. This just seemed to be everyone's favorite palette. I finally picked it up at Nordstrom Rack in Hawaii randomly and I'm so glad I did and I'm so glad I didn't miss out because this palette is absolute fire. Can someone let me know if this is just always the quality of NARS shadows because if that's the case I need to start picking them all up because this is fire quality fire quality and just the color story and everything. It just, this palette inspires me, which is, there's only like nine shades in here, but this palette inspires me. It's so beautiful. I think that might be all of the palettes that I have that are like single brands. And now the rest, I have like a couple of palettes from like one brand. Hopefully that makes sense. So first up we have Linda Holberg Cosmetics. I don't believe you can buy these anymore, which is such a like absolute travesty because these palettes are so good. This is the Enchanted Secrets and then Metallic Mysteries 2. And these are like the original Pat McGrath special shades. I'm pretty sure these came out before Pat released her motherships. I think, I could be wrong about that, but I think, but these are actual Pat McGrath special shades, but they're a little bit finer, some of them too. Like, I don't know if you can see that. Look, look, I feel like it's not focusing. Here we go, look at that. They are incredible. And then this gold shade in here, in Metallic Mysteries, you can tell how much I've loved it. This is my first like original love. This is the first eyeshadow, pal uh, eyeshadow just period that I have ever just fell head over heels in love with. I used this nearly every day. In fact, I don't know why I'm still not using it. I've just forgotten about it because I got so many other pretty um, palettes. These are incredible and I just wish that Linda would bring them back. Next up is Lethal Cosmetics. So I made these two palettes, not last year, but the year before for um, Black Friday because uh, a few people, I got really into watching videos about indie makeup, I think, or maybe it was Teresa is Dead actually, because as you know, she loves Lethal is Lethal Cosmetics and then you can go on their Lethal website and like design your own palettes and I got really really into it And so I designed these two palettes and I love the colors I picked. I love these colors. I love um, Everything that Lethal Cosmetics stands for. I just don't find the quality of these shadows to be as Wowing I guess as what 
Teresa is Dead seems to. I just really don't find them to be anything special. I actually find them to be quite hard to work with, especially the mattes, and I find the metallics a little bit crumbly. I don't know if that's just the formula that I got or like what, but I love the colors that are in here because they're so unique to my collection, which is why I picked them. Like this like periwinkle color, this navy blue, this color, like all of the green, like this whole palette is so unique. And same with these, like that color right there. I just, I really, really love them. And I need to start dipping back into them and seeing if I can really get this palette, oh, this formula to just really work for me. Or these, these are a couple of years old now, so they might just be a bit old as well. But I just, I got them and I just got so frustrated with using them and then just kind of gave up. So yeah, again, let me know if you want to see a video of me like trying these out again. I have a couple of Beauty Bay palettes and they're both green. One I bought myself, which was this one right here. And then one the lovely Nicole sent me and cause she had like a double up of it. And like, look at them. I mean, look at them. The greens are just, it's just truly, truly impeccable. I love the color story. I actually think this got released last year, I'm pretty sure. And I actually think this was the color story of the year. Like, is this not a color story? Like, and this green, look at that. That's impeccable. This formula is so good. I, again, this is another palette that does not get enough love in my collection because look at them. Seriously, just like actually mind blowing. And the quality of the mattes and everything in here as well, they're just, re this is actually really, really good quality eyeshadows, like solid quality and so cheap, like so cheap. I think I picked this up for like 24 Australian dollars or something. And like, if you guys that are coming up for like fall or something, I mean, in Australia right now it's winter, so it's like perfect timing for us. But like when you come up to fall, if you haven't thought about this palette, give it another think because it is so affordable and so good and like just all of the vibes. So I have four ColourPop palettes in my collection. Two are more, I guess, nostalgia and then two are newer ones. This one right here is the Dream, St Dream Street palette from Kathleen lights. Clearly I loved this shade. <laughs> Clearly. And I just keep this for nostalgia reasons to be honest with you because this is one of the first palettes I picked up. I think it was like when I was getting back. No, I picked this up a little while ago, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I really, really loved Kathleen Lights. I still love Kathleen Lights. She's beautiful, but I just love the color story of this. It really needs to go. The quality's not there anymore. It's really quite old. They don't sell this anymore, but I just loved this palette so much. The Wild Nothing palette I picked up in 2020. It was one of ColourPop's first collections back after like the shutdown from COVID. And I just love this palette. Like it's got that sh super shock formula in the pans and again it's not going to show you how beautiful it is now because it is a little bit old so it's lost that like proper um special formula i guess it had they kind of feel a bit dried out now but it was such a beautiful palette at the time so perfect for the everyday and i just felt like this didn't get the hype it deserved but it was really a good quality palette and i can't bring myself to like get rid of it this one is the that's trope palette from them and this is all Emily from Emily's Makeup Bags Fault. I've used this a couple of times and I I really, really, really like it. It's absolutely beautiful. Like, look at them. I use this a lot on my everyday, more so. I haven't used it in a video yet. I will, I've got to get around to it. I see why Emily loves it so much, it's beautiful. This one is the Rudolph palette from last year. My best friend bought it for me for Christmas and I haven't used this a whole lot, I've got to be honest with you because by the time I got it, Christmas was kind of over and so I haven't really had much of an excuse to bring it out and you can't get it anymore, but it is gorgeous. I really love the color story of this, so I'll probably bring it out for like Christmas again this year because I'm sure they'll bring out something similar that, you know, you can dupe. I mean, all of these shades, I bet you are in their collection anyway, but I just really love it. I really love the color story and I just, I love it. I love that it's Christmas because I'm such a Christmas person. I'm actually excited that we're halfway through the year and it means we're closer to Christmas than we're not, but you know, that's just me. I have two Visiart palettes that you guys have seen quite a bit on my channel, especially recently. These are the palettes I took to my to America with me. These are the palettes I used to get like on my wedding day. So this is the Paris Love Letter uh, Etendu palette and this is the Cash Marie Etendu palette and I love both of these so, so much. I definitely want to pick up the um, this size of the Pro Matte palette that they have. I just haven't got around to it yet, but I definitely want to. The formula from Viseart is really one of those formulas that you probably take for granted. When you first try it, you're just like, oh, okay. 
But when you use these, these are the kind of palettes, like these two palettes in particular, I really reach for these like on the everyday. I really, really do. Like these are some of my most used palettes. Like you can even tell just from like how dipped into these mattes are and stuff. They're so well used and well loved from me. And it's because when you start using these every day, that's when you see the beauty of this brand. This formula, if you are a beginner or you're, it doesn't matter what like level of makeup application you're at, but especially if you're a beginner or you're just someone that wants like beautiful, soft, everyday makeup, these palettes are for you because the formula is so impeccable. They blend. They will never turn out poorly. They will never not perform. They're not Pat McGrath special shades. They're not, you know, fancy metallic formulas or anything like that. They're still absolutely gorgeous. But the point is that they're just like for me anyway, I don't know if this is the intention of the brand, but they just feel so everyday user friendly and just, but look absolutely impeccable on the eye. Like you put your look together and you're like, wow, this looks absolutely stunning. How did I get here? And it's just this brand, like it's, they're, they're just so underrated busy art I find. Juvia's Place. I have a lot of Juvia's Place because my husband about mm, probably four years ago now, he bought me a Juvia's Place bundle for my birthday or for our anniversary or something. And these are all the palettes that I got in that bundle from him. So I have the Festival palette, which is this one right here. I, I just love the color stories of these palettes. This is the Warrior palette or the Warrior 2, I should say. And then this is the original Warrior palette, the Magic, Magic Mini palette. And then the, the Deuce palette, I think. And I just love the color stories. The Juvia's Place was just so unique with their color stories. Like, look at this Warrior 2 palette. Like, are these not awesome color stories? Morphe. I used to love Morphe like everyone did. Um, specifically, when I first started at makeup. Uh, what? God. This was back in... I mean, I still have palettes like in the plastic packaging so that tells you how long that's been I think since 2016 or 2017 these are palettes that I purchased uh like ages and ages and ages ago and that's and I've just have kept them but honestly again could probably let these go because really don't use them this palette is the Maddie Ziegler palette I actually have no idea who that is I'm sorry but uh I got this for the color story because this Kenny color like that burnt orange these colors right here this butterfly color at the time was so spectacular. Same with this Godfather. Like they were just actually just truly spectacular. And I loved this whole palette. If you go back through like my Instagram, even my YouTube channel, I actually have a couple of videos where I've used this palette and I really liked the quality. I really, really liked the palette, but I don't use it anymore because it's definitely nowhere near the quality of Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, Patrick Tart, all of the other beautiful palettes I have in my collection. So this is one that I definitely can let go of but I do have it for now. I couldn't bring myself to let go of this 35B because I was like, well, what if I need colorful eyeshadow? I don't need this. I literally have not used it and it smells off. I can actually, I'm not even leaning down close to this and I can smell it from here. So this one definitely needs to go. But I do like that this palette had literally every single color you could possibly ever want in it. And that's what I liked about it. But it's got to go. It's so old. Like it's in their old packaging even. And then this one is just like the old school Jaclyn Hill. This is a very original. I got this like so close to release day from her. And I used to love this. I, I think it's a great palette. I think she did a solid job with this. I think like she hasn't really released anything that's this like epic ever since I personally don't think anyway because the color story is just really really cool something in here for everyone I really liked the quality of this eyeshadow I thought it was really good but this is so old now I just kind of keep this because I feel like it's a part of makeup history I think I can probably let my Morphe palettes properly go this is just a palette of like a Z palette of all my random single eyeshadows so there's a heap of Colourpop shadows in here and then there's also a heap of Makeup Geek shadows um, this one right here is Lucky Penny. I don't know if you guys, I talk about this quite often. God, makeup gets such good quality. I got this like years and years ago and it still feels like beautiful quality. I love makeup. Ah, Lucky Penny, sorry. Look at it. It's like that eggplanty purple color that y'all know I just love. It was like my first OG one and done shadow. You can even see the dint in it. I just used to wear that to work all day, every day. Like it's so gorgeous. Some of these I've barely ever used. I don't even think I've ever used this yellow or this blue. I've literally never used this blue. I just, I don't know why. This was in the phase of like 
everyone was full into single shadows, so I picked some up, but I just never really got into it, and I don't know. I just, I keep them because I do, but I should really just get rid of most of them. I'm not getting rid of Lucky Penny, though. You'll pry that from my dead cold hands. This is my ABH collection. So I have the Modern Renaissance Soft Glam Prison and Subculture. Modern Renaissance, though, original palette from them. This is the OG. I got this when it released. Like, I've hit pan on multiple shadows. Clearly, I loved this palette. I still love this palette. Same with Soft Glam. Again, you could honestly have Modern Renaissance and Soft Glam in your collection and need nothing else ever again. Like, they're just such good quality, great color stories. Like, oh, just like this shadow right here. Like, look at that. Divine. Like, they're so good, these palettes. Like, I, Modern Renaissance and Soft Glam just truly is just... I wish that the brand kept going down Soft Glam Modern Renaissance trajectory and kind of didn't veer off. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Prism, I loved Prism. I actually picked up Prism for this shade, this shade, and this shade. And I did get a bit of use out of it, you can kind of see, but the shadow quality just wasn't really wet there with this palette. And even these two colors that I really liked, they were so black based that when you put them on the eye, they just basically blended into a black eyeshadow. And then this one barely stayed on your eyes at all. So the quality just really wasn't there, but I liked the color story. I know not a lot of people did like the color story, but I did. And then obviously some culture. I feel like we all know about this palette, right? I just stupidly picked this up thinking maybe I'll be different or maybe I'll like it. I just loved the color story. Is the color story not just epic? I love the color story. The quality of this palette is, is bad. It's bad. I know it's pressed pigments, but it's hard to use them. It's just, I don't like it. I don't like the quality of this, but I love the color story. And it's just, it's a part of makeup history. So that's why I keep it. <laughs> And then this one is the Norvina Volume 5. I wasn't going to pick this up, but then everyone, I mean everyone, why can't I open it? There we go. Everyone just loved this palette so much that I had such FOMO that I literally had to go and buy it. And I, I agree. The quality of this is beautiful. Even though I don't super love purple, you can, there's like so many, like this shade right here, um, E4, E2, A4, A5, like such cool colors. D1, like... They're really, really beautiful colors. And even the purples in here, like the actual performance of this palette is second to none. It is really high quality. So I get why everyone just absolutely raved about this. And then Norvina volume three, I think this was. Again, one I picked up for the color story. I just really liked it. This was um, in the middle of COVID, like right when we were in lockdown, ABH had this like crazy five day sale. And it was right when I was like, it was me coming off my year off being in lockdown and being like, well, I've got nothing but time on my hands. Let me start my makeup again. And I wanted to buy some new makeup for my collection because I hadn't for an entire year. And this was like ABH had a massive sale. So I picked up this palette and soft glam in that sale for like nothing. Like I'm talking like I paid like $30 or something ridiculous for this palette. And I have used it a bit, not too much, but I just, I still really like this color story. I really do. There's a lot of neutrals in here and I love this acid lime green and like the yellow and the hot pink to like add these bright pops of color. Okay, let's talk about a brand that is so underrated. It's just disgusting. <laughs> Luna Beauty. Okay. So I have the Eternal Eclipse palette and the Nude Prism palette. And I think that both of these are like run, don't walk type palettes. I really solidly do. Nude, Pris Nude Prism is like perfect for every single day. And then Eternal Eclipse is like, I'm going out at night and I want to get my glam on. And I love these. The quality is exceptional. Like can't stress to you the quality of these palettes and like the shades, like they're so unique and different and they need to be like hyped up more truly because, and especially like this row, you guys is, tr it's like cream shadows. They're almost like cream metallic shadows. They're so good. Look at them. Look, I don't know why people don't hype up Manny's brand more, but it deserves it because truly this is second to none quality. I would repurchase both of these palettes in a heartbeat. They're just exceptional. And this shadow right here makes such a, this one with this Sam shade tapped all over the lid is like the most perfect everyday quick go-to look for me. I love it. Patrick Ta, I'm going to open these before I put them down because they're so bloody reflective. 
Um, Patrick Tar Dimensions, Major Dimensions 1 and 2. This one is 1, this one is 2. Um, it took me so, well, it didn't take me too long to get my hands on this because I just happened to go to America at the time it got released. Thank you, Lord. This one, um, my legend Patty from MDs Make Me Happy at Instagram, she bought that for me from the Patrick Tar website and shipped it to me because she's a legend and that's how I finally got my hands on this. It's been sold out forever. Anyway, long story short, uh, I love this. Love. Quality is second to none. This is the um, palette I'm wearing, this one right here on my eyes today at the start of the video. The mattes pretty much blend themselves. The metallics are like Pat McGrath special shades, but not as sparkly, but they are like Pat McGrath special shades. And then you have a couple of proper metallics in here if you want to add that as like a base. Really, really good quality. You have some cream shadows in here to use as a base or a liner or whatever it is that you want to use. I don't really use these and to be completely honest, I could go without the cream shadows in here, but that's just personal preference. But yeah, the quality of this is hyped up for a reason, truly. And then we have Melt Cosmetics, Gemini 1 and Gemini 2, that's upside down. Here we go. Haven't tried Melt before either and really, really don't mind the formula. I do not like the metallic formula in these palettes, honestly. I don't like this metallic formula and I don't like these metallic formulas. They feel very dense. This one's okay. It's not too bad. But the mattes, chef's kiss. The mattes are good quality and this color story, like the mattes of this color story, I just absolutely freaking adore. I do really love this color story as well, don't get me wrong. I just would get more use out of this side, but like even this rose story over here, I'm into that a lot. But yeah, beautiful color stories, both of the palettes. You need to be like a grungy kind of makeup wearer really to kind of get any use out of this, but they are gorgeous. And I already have a look with both of these palettes up on my channel if you're interested. I have quite a few Huda Beauty palettes, nearly all of them, nearly all of them. So the first one here, actually let's do the little ones first. Uh, Wild Obsessions Jaguar palette, can't recommend enough. I think this is gorgeous. If you're looking for a cool tone glam palette, um, look no further. The quality of this is really good. The shadows in here are beautiful. This shadow right here is like a um, Pat McGrath special shade or like a Linda Holberg shade, just really, really special. And then there's like this gunmetal kind of silver, like, and this really unique one and then the gold one, love it. This is probably, actually, this would be the Huda Beauty palette that I would recommend the most. If you said to me like, what is the one Huda palette I can't walk past, this one would be it for me. And then we have the Python palette, which if you love color, then this is your gal, because again, this blue shade in the middle, like spectacular, and even these ones in this green, like look, gorgeous. And then the mattes in here are actually, I was expecting the mattes, especially that um, like acid color there. I was expecting it honestly to just really like blend away to nothing on the eye. I didn't think it would be pigmented at all, but it really is. Like this is a good performing palette, if, especially if you love those colors. The bigger palettes. So we have Rose Quartz, which was just such a hit. Wasn't Rose Quartz not like one of the biggest hits? Absolutely beautiful. Truly a special palette, especially if you love those like pinky tones, like truly, truly gorgeous. The Naughty palette. This is like the neutral lover's dream. It's very chocolatey. Has this like kind of new marble formula that she kind of created, which I don't know. I could honestly probably just leave that formula. I actually thought I would love the Naughty palette the most, but I actually think it's one of my least faves from her. Then we have Mercury Retrograde. If I can open it, oh my God. Mercury Retrograde's color story was so just crazy unique at the time and it's absolutely beautiful. I just love these shades right here. Gorgeous. This palette doesn't perform like, even, sorry, I as a side note, this shade corner right here. If you have this, put this on your lid. It's crazy beautiful and it's not going to show on camera but it's like a duochrome it's really pretty anyway um this color like this palette doesn't perform for me some this is some people's like holy grail palette like holy holy grail and i want to be like that but this palette just doesn't perform quite it's like the mattes the metallics in here are beautiful but the mattes in here just don't perform super well for me but I really love the metallics, but I do love the color story. New Nude, I used new, like the heck out of New Nude. I don't even know if you can see the dent in here. I have made a lot of, like I have used this palette a lot. Um, this, I got this like, I think like on that year off that I took from social media and like makeup. And I wore this like nearly every day in my real life. And it was just such a staple for me. The quality is not there anymore. It's definitely past its expiry, that's for sure. And her 
formula in general has improved greatly since here, but I really have a soft spot for this one. It's so beautiful. And then Desert Dusk. I just remember like Desert Dusk was such a hype. Like this palette was such a hype and like the color story is gorgeous. I loved everything about this palette. Obviously I used it a lot. I've hit pan on one of the shades. I do really, really like this eyeshadow palette as well. But again, the quality is just not there anymore. It's very old. This is my Tom Ford collection. So this one right here, I recently got in America. Most of these I recently got in America to be fair. I've been hunting this for years because this pink and black packaging is just, if I had a makeup brand, this is what it would look like. I love it so much. The shades in here are body heat. To be honest, the color story of this, it's the only time I swear I have ever bought makeup for the packaging that I probably won't get that much use out of and I'm okay with it because this is all about the packaging for me and it's the only time I've done it and it's probably the only time I will do it. But anyway, body heat. I mean, this color story is beautiful. It's just that this isn't that exciting to me, but the packaging is just, it's it. These two palettes here though, these are from the Extreme Badass collection and if you can get your hands on this, don't even question it. Especially this one. This is Metal Lust and it has two mattes and then this two, this is an new formula from Tom Ford from last year and when I tell you that this is one of the best metallic formulas I have ever tried even compared to Pat McGrath I mean Pat McGrath is like super special but like this is right there up there with it this is like one of my all-time favorite palettes of all time period like it's so incredible so if you can get your hands on it just don't even question the cost of it honestly it's so good and then I really like Lava Luster just because I love this formula from Tom Ford I can't wait I really hope he brings out more quads in this formula and then these just add a really nice little extra va a little extra extra sparkle on top of any eye look or sometimes I'll just throw my bronzer through the crease and then any one of these shades like over the lid and it's just it's really really gorgeous this one is the smoky quartz cream quad and I've only used this once before and I really like it I like to put this one all over the lid but this is a beautiful cream quad I really fell in love with the cream quad called rose topaz this was my first cream quad I actually picked this up before I went to America and I basically wore this every day in America I'm not even kidding I put put this one all over the lid with either this metallic or this metallic and then just used a little bit of this dark brown to like deepen the eye up a little bit and when I tell you I nearly wore this every day I seriously did it is so good and so easy to use because it's that cream formula it's just truly impeccable and so because of that and again, I would pick up Rose Topaz in a heartbeat. Like, I wouldn't even question it. But because of that, I picked up Smoky Quartz, which is this one. And then also Tiger Eye, which is the other cream quad formula. And I've used this one a couple of times. And I really, really like them. I find that this cream quad formula from Tom Ford is truly just a brilliant one and done kind of shadow formula. And if you are someone that wants that one and done shadow formula, then I highly recommend checking these out because I... I truly love the cream. I know it's probably caused some controversy. I know some people don't like the cream formula. I love it. It's for me. And then this last one is Nude Dip. And I also get so much use out of this. This is great everyday, like, quad, especially if you, like, go to work, like, and actually work in an office and you just need something really quick and easy to throw on the eyes. These shades, like, with your bronzer thrown all over the crease with these, this, like, on the lid and then this shade to deepen up the outer corner or the crease a little bit. Again, chef's kiss perfection. I have quite a few Natasha Denona palettes, as you can see. And actually, I just also picked up the Natasha Denona Love palette for 40 Australian dollars. Is that not a steal? I wouldn't have paid full price or even like... I wouldn't have paid anything more than $40 for that love palette, let me tell you, from Natasha Denona, because I'm just not going to use that color story a lot. But when I saw it for $40, bucks, i was like, sure, why not? Let's get it. Anyway, um, this is the face palette from Natasha Denona. I also recently, by the way, as a side note, have just done a... How many palettes do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's right. I did eight days of Natasha Denona. I think it ended up working out to be like 10 days because I did like a full pastel review and then did like a ranking of Natasha Denona at the end of it. Anyway, I have recently done looks with every single one of these eyeshadow palettes on my channel. Um, I also have a Natasha Denona playlist, so check it out if you're interested in getting some inspo. But I have a heap of looks on my channel using all of these palettes as well. I, I use these palettes quite a lot because it's Natasha Denona. Um, so this is the face palette that, she, or the glam face palette that she recently released. Why can't I lift this? There we go. Um, this is the light version and it's all about these two shades and this highlighter for me. They're impeccable. 
they're impeccable and it's not going to show now because I've used this palette too much but when you first buy this untouched when I tell you the level of mesmerizing this palette is I'm not even kidding like that's the whole I would I was such a clown I like bagged this palette so bad I was like this is so boring who needs this and then I saw it in person and was like I absolutely need this this is stunning I guess we'll do the big palettes first so this is trio chrome I got this for Christmas last year um, because they have Sephora Australia had this on sale for hundred dollars. It's normally 230 I think and again wouldn't pay 230 for it But for hundred I was like, can I please have this for Christmas? Gorgeous. I love the mattes in here. The mattes are truly stunning The only thing I wish is that I do kind of wish that these um Two shades were a little bit more different. They're both so purple. I could have, like, I would have liked a different, proper different shade. But other than that, I really do love this. I don't get a lot of use out of this, but I'm still happy I have it in my collection because I think that the color story is really unique. And I, every now and then when I want that pastel pop, I, I really quite like it. The Bieber palette. How can you even go past the Bieber palette? I don't know why it took me so long to buy it. Well, I do. It's expensive, but I have never looked back from buying this palette. It is so good. The mattes in here are so good. Perfect for every day. Perfect one and dones. Perfect for glam. Perfect for a wedding. Perfect to dress. Whatever you want, this palette is perfect for. Like, it's just perfect. This whole palette is perfect and I love it. The Leela palette is my least favorite from Natasha Denona. I would actually love to see her rebring this out in her, like, Bieber trio chrome kind of formula. I love the color story. I think the color story of this palette is actually just gorgeous and I know so many of you find this to be your favorite palette from her. I just didn't find the quality there for me. I don't know. I think I got an expired palette or something because mine never worked from day one whereas a lot of you guys are like oh my god no this formula is impeccable. So yeah I don't know. I don't really know what happened there. But I've tried and tried with this palette. I've had a really long time as soon as it got released I picked this up but yeah I love the color story. I just don't love I don't like the packaging either. I, I would love to see that changed as well. Now we have all the minis. Or the midis, not the minis. This is retro. I feel like you guys have seen me use this so often on my channel. I love this. It is gorgeous. I love the color story. I love cream to powder formula from her. So many good like color combinations. So many good one and dones. Love it. If you want to see more in depth swatches in that, just go check out my playlist or my review videos of these. Uh, Natasha Denona Glam, again, do I even need to explain this? I've used it so much on my channel. It's amazing. I love it for every occasion. And if there was one Natasha Denona palette that I would recommend getting, it's probably this one, to be fair. And retro. This one and retro. Pastel. The pastel palette is her newest addition. It is a beautiful color story. I think this was an A for effort from her, but I just don't think that the quality is here. These pastels, like, you have to dig so hard into these cream to powder formula shades. I thought this palette was going to work really well because her cream to powder formula is so good, but there's something about this cream to powder formula in this palette. It just doesn't work as well. There's not pigment here. You have to work so hard to build these up. The metallics are stunning. Truly, the metallics are stunning. And I love the color story. It's just, it's not my fave, like, matte formula from her. And then the bronze palette, which is, like, just a, like, a warm, neutral lover's dream. Is it not gorgeous? Like, that orange shade, like, this shade right here, this shade right here. Gorgeous. Um, this is a really good palette when you just don't want to have to think about how your eyeshadow is going to turn out. If you just want to be able to grab literally any shade in the palette and put it on your eye and know that it's going to look good, then this is the palette for you. It's really perfect for that. And it's a great quality palette. We've just got Pat McGrath Labs left. I'm not going to deep dive on Pat McGrath Labs, you guys. I have a million Pat videos. As you know, I have a Pat playlist. I have a heap of ranking videos. If you want to see deep dives, go in there. We're just going to breeze through them. So we have Celestial Odyssey. One of my all-time faves. I saw Morgan, Morgan Turner the other day say that she didn't really like this palette. And I was like, how dare you, Morgan? How dare you? <laughs> Just kidding. She's entitled to her own opinion. But she said she didn't feel inspired by this. How do you not feel inspired? The green, the gunmetal, the lilac, the blue, the orange, this duochrome, the pink. How do you not? It's amazing. Anyway, love this. Don't love this one, but I have it. <laughs> the Venus in Fleurs Quad. Yes, this shade is pretty. Yes, this is pretty, but I just... I don't know. I can't get behind it, you guys. And I hate this matte. I can't get behind it. The two Bridgerton palettes. I have both of the Bridgerton palettes, which I actually just did a look using both of these palettes. I love these. I think they're really good quality. Diamond of the First Water, this blue one right here, is more my favorite than Belle of the Ball. But I like both of them, and I'm super happy I have both in my collection. And I just think, I just love the quality. I know Teresa is dead, really thinks the quality in these is crap. I don't know what's different between, like, either her expectations and my expectations or her formula that she got in mine, but I find the quality in these to be really, really good. So, yeah. 
anyway I just wish the color stories were different as you know we won't go down that path let's start from one and go all the way down I have subliminal I have sublime subversive decadence which decadence is the one that took me most by surprise because I never wanted to pick it up and it's one of my faves bronze seduction midnight sun divine rose one divine rose two and last but not least Utopian Dream. Okay, that was the entire eyeshadow palette collection, the whole shebang. What do we think? What do you think? Are there any favorites in my collection that you say that you're like, oh my God, these palettes are my favorite? Are there any palettes that you think I'm missing where you're just like, wait, you don't have this palette? How do you not? Let me know in the comments down below. You know I love chatting with you guys. And I hope you found this video fun and interesting. And if you're watching till this point, you're an absolute legend. I appreciate you so, so much. If you haven't already, pretty please give the video a thumbs up and hit that subscription button. It helps my channel out so much. And we are on our way to 5K. We're trying to get to 5K. Let's do it. <laughs> anyway, uh, and I hope that you have an amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye.